Okay, so today we will study map reduce function. So to start with map reduce, till now we have seen all the aggregate pipeline stages. So the aggregate pipeline stages works in different stages, you know, and we can actually get the output as part of our requirement. So we have already seen that thing. So now we will see how map reduce function works. Right, and the MapReduce function is actually a kind of function which is also used to display the contents of a database in a desired fashion or in a desired manner. So if you want to reduce the content because of the huge database, okay, that are having a, a very large content, and if you want to reduce the database content, okay, so in a, in a desired manner, if you want to design it, so using some aggregate functions, we, if you want to do that, so we can actually use the map reduce function to perform that particular task. Now, the, the name map reduce actually itself suggests that it has two operations, right? So the first operation, if you see that it comes the two words, that is the map and the reduce, right? So the map is the first operation and it reduces the second operation. So map operation, so map is actually the operation. So in which each document is actually, you know, being processed along with emitting one or more documents or rather objects for each document. So basically, we can actually say that a mapper maps to the desired fields in the data collection, right? So now in the reduce phase, what happens in the reduce phase, that is a second phase of the map reduce. So the operation of the map operation are, you know, being combined together. So once the map operation combines the data together, okay, so whatever the output you got from you know the map operation after or rather you know, after executing the map operation okay so the reduce function combines all of the output of the map operation okay so so the function of the map operation uh, rather the the reduce operation is to take the input okay to take the output of the map operation as input and combine all of those outputs of the map operation and it finally gives uh, the second output. Uh, I'm talking about the reduce function, right? So in MongoDB map reduce, it can be, you know, we can say that optionally we have finalized stages in which it can do some final modifications and it can display the output. So that is uh, the reduce phase. So uh, map reduce uh, also we can we can actually say that the map reduce is actually a JavaScript function. Okay, so map reduce uses you know a Java, a JavaScript to perform these functions that is the map function and the reduce function as well. Okay, so this is actually the diagram of uh, how it is actually happening. Okay, so the mapping and the re reduction tasks. Okay, I will explain it with the example, with the help of example as well. So as of now, I will just explain what is uh, a map and what is a reduce. So as I said, so the map and the reduce, so both of these two functions are actually the JavaScript functions. Okay, so both of these functions are the JavaScript functions. And so the map, is a JavaScript function that reduces uh, the second uh, function uh, operation is also a JavaScript function. And now both of these functions are also, you know, user defined functions, okay? So both with the JavaScript function, so that is the first point that both the map and the deduce functions are the JavaScript functions. And with that, it can also be said that the both map and the deduce function are the user defined functions as well, right? So uh, what we can say regarding this, that 
the mongodb actually provides you the facility to combine you know these two functions that is the map function and the reduce function and get the desired output because since uh, both of the map and the reduce are the user defined function so the map function is a user defined function and the reduce function is also uh, you know a user defined function so we can actually the user can actually define the map function and the reduce function according to his or her requirement and based on that we can actually get our desired output so to summarize the concept that the javascript provides some better facility than aggregation pipelining system that we have studied in the last session but still it is actually less less efficient you know and more complex operations you know it, it is actually we can say that this map reduce is actually a more complex operation if you are actually comparing with that of uh, the aggregate function that we discussed in the previous session so uh, that is why we can actually say to summarize the concept of the aggregate function and uh, this map reduce that the aggregate pipeline is actually a better option if you want to do the same task which you can actually do by the map reduce function as well right so this is how you know the diagram looks like so these are actually the different you know slices of tasks okay or text files as it is written over here now it, it is actually gets map okay the tasks actually get map according to their you know the, i will explain you in the next slide as well so the map you know the map or the mapper actually uh, is having two you know parameters that is the key and the value okay so based on the key and the value pair okay so based on the key and the value pair we can say that uh, the mapper takes the key and the value pair as the input right and the data may be in structured or unstructured form so it can be anything and the framework can make it into keys and values and the keys are the reference of uh, the input values and the values are the data sets and the user can actually create a custom business logic based on their need for data processing so now i this point i have uh, explained in the previous slide as well so how uh, the reason behind that how our user can actually create a custom you know the business logic based application because it is the map reduce is actually a system defined function right and the task is applied on every input value okay so now i will show you uh, that how the reduce task works that the reducer takes the key value pair okay which is created by the mapper as input okay so now the key value pairs are sorted by the key elements and in the reducer we perform the sorting aggregation or summation type of jobs now the question is how this map reduce task works so the given you know the inputs are actually processed by the user defined methods so what are the user defined methods so the user defined methods are the the map task or the mapper and the reducer okay so the map and reduce methods so all different you know business logics are working on the mapper section the mapper generates the intermediate data now this is very important the mapper generates the intermediate data and the reducer takes them as input okay so the data are actually processed by the user defined function in the the reduce section so the final output is stored in hdfs so uh, to summarize the concept i will just show you the example over here as well as i said so the map reduce is actually a data processing paradigm so this is actually uh, the definition of map reduce you can say so this is the definition of map reduce which says that it is actually a data processing paradigm 
for condensing large volumes of data okay large volumes of data into useful aggregated result so the concept of map reduce is when we we are actually using the map reduce is when we are having a very uh, a large volume of data okay so if i am having a very huge data and i want to aggregate the the huge data into some useful uh, summarized form okay so then we can use the concept of map reduce okay so the map reduce operation this you know in, in mongodb it provides uh, the the map reduce database comments okay and uh, consider the following a map reduce operation so over here i will just zoom the screen over here and you can see that the format of the map reduce is uh, we'll have to write like this that is the db.orders.mapreduce so now orders is actually over here is uh, the name of the collection and inside the map reduce will be having two functions that is the map and the reduce two functions so in map we have uh, the emit function inside that so emit function actually emits the the customer id and amount okay so th these are the two fields that are actually present in the orders collection right so the customer id and the amount these two fields are actually present in the orders uh, collection so this map function is going to emit these two fields that is the customer id and the amount so let's say in 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 our case so if uh, we have uh, you know a collection called orders named collection where we have the customer id and the amount which actually means uh, for different customers we are having the customer id and the amount spent by each customer for certain products right so if i want uh, the you know the summarized you know, output of all the customers okay who spent how much amount of money okay so if i want to do that so we are going to map all of these customers based on the customer id and we'll be mapping the amount okay based on the customer id so over here customer id that is the cost id is actually the the you know the key and the amount is the value so after mapping the customer id and amount the reduce function will take the input that the map function is actually emitting that is the key and the value okay so over here key means the customer id and the value means the amount so the output emitted by the map function will be taken as the input by the reduce function and it is going to return the summation of the values so that is as i said that if i want to find the total amount of money spent by each and every customer right so that is why we are i'm writing like this that is a return array dot sum and what uh, sum we want to do that is a values that is uh, uh, which means the amount spent by each customer right so return why array dot sum because array means uh, since we are having more than one customer and if i want to actually sum it up so for more than one values we need to have one array right so that is why we are writing array dot sum and inside that values as a parameter so which uh, over over here we are will be getting the summation of all the amount that is spent by each customer and now uh, coming uh, over here it is a query so query uh, status a which is actually this this you know query part is actually an optional part you don't if you wish you can write or if you don't uh, wish you, you, can, you can you know eliminate this part as well which actually means this query part is actually an optional part as i said so if i want to add some extra you know a condition for our collection right so for let's say i don't want 
to you know open it on or, or rather i don't want to map all of the customers that are there in the orders table right if i don't want to operate on all of the customers which are actually present there in the orders table rather i want to only you know map those customers which whose actually status is a then this is actually one you know an optional statement so if i'm writing this so then only for those customers whose status is a will be what uh, will be operated on right and again coming to output so the, this again this is again you know uh, a compulsory statement so output uh, that is out uh, colon and inside double quotes you were writing orders dot total so this is actually means that uh, once we you know we are doing the mapping function and the redu reduce function so once the map reduce function uh, is getting performed so all of this task will be you know will get stored in a certain file and we are actually naming that file as order underscore totals so you can actually give any other name as well over here so that is obviously up to the wish of the user who will be coding the whole thing so in my case i have given the name order underscore totals so this is actually the format of uh, the map reduce you know the whole function so that is uh, the db dot uh, the collection name dot map reduce okay and uh, after that map and for map we will be having a first you know curly bracket and for the reduce we will be having the second curly bracket where we will be actually returning uh, certain values and for the map we will be having uh, the first curly bracket which will actually emit certain values okay and then the query part uh, so that is the third you know you know the curly bracket is actually optional over here and then comes the output right so output <coughs> which means that is the order underscore totals so which is uh, the name of the file in which we are going to store the data right so this is the actual syntax of the map reduce function so next coming to the next slide so over here as you can see that uh, the map reduce operation i have uh, tried to explain it in a very uh, short manner that uh, as i said that in our collection let's say we have uh, you know the three you know documents that is the customer id the amount spent by each customer and the steps right so uh, as you can see we have uh, four documents over here document one document two document uh, three and document four right now over here the customer id is over here is a123 now over here also it is a a123 now over here the customer id is b212 which is actually you know a different customer id and again in over here you can see that customer id is a123 so uh, as you can see a123 i am getting it for the first time getting it for the second time and getting it for the third time right so and this is uh, the name of uh, the collection that is the orders uh, orders is the name of the collection okay order is the name of the collection now i will just explain uh, some part over here as well so as i have uh, said over here that you know the user you know uh, this mapper generates the intermediate data so which actually means you know the map the map function emits a certain key and value pair okay so the map function emits the key and the value pair so the output of the key uh, the output of the map function that is the key value pair will be taken as the input for the reduce function okay so that is why we call the the you know the output of the map function as the intermediate from as the intermediate data okay so we call that is why we call this uh, the output of the map function as the intermediate data and the intermediate data actually we feed into uh, this reduce function to get 
certain aggregated function. So that is actually the, the final uh, function, uh, not function aggregated output. Okay. So we'll be getting the aggregated output once we implement the reduce function. And the output of the map function is called the intermediate function, which we fill into the reduce function again. Now coming to the concept over here that I was explaining that the orders is actually the name of the collection and the customer ID is uh, we are having uh, same customer ID as A123 three times and B212 for one time, right? Now, as I have uh, mentioned that uh, in this part that let's say I have uh, taken considered this query as well that the status A so the map function will only operate on those queries or, or rather on th those documents which are having the status as A. So as you can see, we are having the status A over here, status A over here, status A over here, and status D over here. So since uh, we are having status D over here, even though we have uh, the customer ID A123, A123, and A123 over here as well, so then also we are not going to consider this particular document since the status is D, right? So we are not going to consider this particular document. So we will be only focusing on these three documents whose status is A. So that is why I said at that time that this is this query is actually used to you know, give some additional conditions, right? So over here, as you can see that the status A, status C, and status A, all these status A documents will be considered and this document will not be considered. Now, since as I said that these three documents will be considered, these three documents will be passed on to the query to the second stage. So this is the second stage, okay? Where, so the filtering is done. So this part, uh, this particular document will be eliminated. Right? So this particular document will be eliminated and we have filtered out the, the status A documents and over here, so this is the second stage of the query. So now once we uh, filtered out uh, based on our, the conditions, okay? So we, we are left out with these three you know, documents. So now the map function will, you know, it will be operated on this three, uh, documents okay so uh, a123 a123 and b212 so three uh, three documents are there so as you as you can understand that a123 a123 will be you know grouped together that is what uh, the map function is doing so based on the customer id that is the key so over here customer id customer id is the key right and the amount amount is the value, right? So based on the key, based on the key, we are going to group the values, right? So uh, based on the key that is A123, we have grouped the, the values or what is the value over here? That is the amount. So 500 and uh, 250, we have grouped into an array, right? And for B212, that is the second, uh, key so this is the second key that is a b212 so b212 we are we only have one document over here that is the amount 200 so uh, we have taken 200 as the only uh, element over here right so that is the function of uh, what the map function is doing okay next what we are going to do is uh, we once the we get the output as this one and this one from the map function, the reduce function we will feed this output that this intermediate data. So this is actually called the intermediate data. Okay, so we will be feeding this intermediate data to the reduce function. Okay, so which will actually do the summation. So as as you have already seen that over here, we are doing the array dot sum operation, right? So array dot sum operation means we are working on the values uh, uh, parameter and that is the array dot sum. 
which actually means uh, we'll be summing up the amount spent by each customer. So, which actually counts to 750. So, 500 plus 250, that is 750, we'll be getting for the customer A123 who spent uh, rupees, 7, rupees 750, right? And in case of B212, that is a second customer, since we have only one amount over here, that is 200. So 200 will be the only value over in, in the second, for the second customer, right? So this is how uh, the reduce function works and order underscore totals is actually the name we have given while storing the map reduce operation finally. So, order underscore totals. So this is how, uh, with this name, the ultimate uh, final data uh, we are going to store, right? So this is how uh, the map reduce operation or the map function and the reduce function is working, right? So to summarize the concept of uh, the map reduce function, so we can say that uh, in the map reduce, you know, the map phase is actually, you know, it 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 is taking certain documents, okay, as input, okay. So the map reduce, uh, the first thing is that we have the mapper function and the reducer function. Now the the mapper function, right? So the mapper function, it 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 is taking certain documents as input from a collection and emits one or more objects, okay for each input document. Now, whereas uh, uh, we can say in, in other words that the mapper will start off by reading a collection of data, okay, from a database, okay, and building a map with the only required fields, okay, we wish to process and group them into one array, okay, based on the key. Okay, so based on the key, we'll be grouping the objects. Okay, so grouping of the objects is done in the mapper function. So over here, as I said, uh, I will just uh, explain one more thing over here. So uh, since we have given this condition, that is the status as A, that is why the concept of second stage is, uh, you know, happening, right? Now, if we actually don't write, you know, if we don't write this this particular statement, we, if we don't give this particular statement, right? So if uh, the map function that is compulsory we are writing and the reduce function and the output, these three statements we are writing and if we're not writing the query part, so then the status A will not be considered. So in that case, what will happen, you know, this, this particular document will also be considered. So in that case, what is going to happen so this particular second stage will not be there, okay? So filtering out will not be there, okay? We don't have to actually filter out any documents. And over here, what will happen? So for A123, in that case, we will be having one document, second document, and three, third document. So that is uh, over here, we'll be, after the map function, we'll be having, we'll be having 500, 250, and, uh, you know, 300. So that, that will be the array if I'm not writing that status as A, right? And over here, only 200 will be the answer for upper implementation of the map function. And once you, you perform the reduce function, so, you know, it will, it will what will you get? So 500 plus 250 plus 300, right? So 500 plus 250, we are already getting 750. So plus 300, right? So that means we'll be getting one zero five zero as the final output right and then after that so that is that is the concept of the extra query that we have taken so that is the status as a so if we are not taking it so we'll be getting some different output okay and so that is what i said that it is going to actually group them into one array okay based on the key okay and uh, the concept of the reducer is, you know, this, this key value pair that this map function is actually emitting is fed into the reducer function, which will actually process the values, right? 
So in other words, we can say that uh, the second phase is the reduced phase, which actually combines uh, the output of the map operation, right? So next comes uh, the key terms that, uh, or the terminologies that I have actually explained during uh, the session, right? So the map function, the reduce function, and the output, right? Or rather the out. So the, the map function is actually says that, uh, as I already said in, in the very beginning, that the map function is a JavaScript function, okay? So it is used to record a value with a key and uh, produces a key value pair, right? And uh, for the reduce function, again, uh, we can say that it is also uh, a custom a JavaScript function. So both of these uh, functions are actually, you know, the map function and the reduce function are actually, you know, the user defined uh, custom JavaScript functions. Okay. So now the reduce function is also used to reduce or group together all the documents which have the same key, right? And the out uh, keyword is used it is to specify the location of the map reduced query output. So over here in the out, uh, we'll be giving the name of the file uh, with which the, the output of the map reduce is going to get stored, right? So next comes uh, the three uh, more important key terminologies, that is the query, which is actually used to specify the optional selection criteria for selecting the documents. So again, I have, uh, I think I have already explained, right? So over here, I have already explained the query part. So this is actually the optional part, right? So, so query is actually the optional selection criteria for selecting a certain documents. So based on uh, extra criteria or extra condition, if you want to put, then we'll be using the query uh, keyword and the sort function or the, or the, or the rather the sort you know, keyword is also an optional criteria. We, if we want to sort, you know, the selected documents and if I want to sort it, so then we'll be using the sort keyword and also the limit is also the optional, you know, keyword, which is used for, if, if we want to actually limit the number of outputs. On the, on the output screen, right? So if we have a thousand output and uh, if I want to uh, limit uh, the number of outputs to up to uh, 10 outputs, if, if I want to view only the 10 outputs out of, uh, let's say thousand outputs, then uh, we'll be using the limit keyword, right? So this is also an optional you know, keyword, which is used for no, if, if I want to limit the number of outputs in the output screen. So now if you have any query, then you can ask me. So that's it for today's session.